Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with a blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Ball Engineer Hydrocarbon Space Master Orbital 2 Chronograph Watch. That is a mouthful, but this is actually a hell of a timepiece with a lot of cool features. Um, and I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. I've always liked this watch. I always thought it was attractive looking and cool and super manly, but wearing this a lot, traveling with this watch just made me fall in love with it um, in a lot of more ways. So ball watches come in a lot of varieties. Um, they all use tritium gas tubes as illumination, which is good. Um, and there's, there's smaller ones and larger ones. This isn't the biggest one they make, but it's a very thick watch. So you can see there, there's a lot going on there. It is a thick timepiece, but there's a lot of fantastic micro adjustment opportunities in the in the bracelet, which I'll get to, which means you can wear it very comfortably. So before I put it on, I want to talk about just a few key elements here. It is bigger wearing than it might even look because you have their sort of exaggerated uh, crown guard structure. And the way this works, if you've never seen it, is you push this little button here, this thing flips up, and then you can sort of unscrew the crown um, to wind it or adjust it. I'm not really sure if there's like a really important use for this. I think that, you know, just having this where you could screw this in with these very high crown guards would have been enough, but it has sort of a fun little feature. Another interesting feature that I don't know how useful it is, but it's cool, is you look here at the chronograph pushers and you can see there's little windows there. And inside of the chronograph pushers is actually another tritium gas tube. So this is the first time I've seen a chronograph watch which has tritium gas tubes illuminating uh, <laughs> the chronograph um, pushers. So if you want to see, if you for some reason can't see them at night and forget forget that they're there, um, you can you can see them light up. That's just kind of a fun feature uh, that I don't necessarily know that you need, but is is kind of a cool thing and and is part of the you know part of the appeal of having kind of a over-engineered men's mechanical sport watch. Um, you have a navigational bezel here, which is bi-directional, um, and you use that for certain navigation purposes. Um, it's, it's kind of a shame that there wasn't also on here a 24-hour scale, so you could have a third time zone. Although, if you do look inside of the watch, because this does have a GMT hand, there is an independent 24-hour um, scale on the flange ring in orange, and I do like that they matched the color of the GMT hand with its scale, so that you can sort of read the GMT time um, quite easily, and that's a nice thing. And what you also have, ironically, is a second navigational scale um, in there above it. So you have the GMT 24-hour scale, then a navigational scale, then another, another navigational scale. There's probably a good reason for that. I'm not an expert on how to use these navigational bezels, but um, I'm, I'm sure there's a reason for that. I'd love to hear about what it is. The movement in this watch is basically a base um, Etta Valjo 7750 that has been modified to incorporate a GMT hand. So you have a full uh, you know, 12 hour chronograph, 24 hour hand, and the date, and you do have that um, magnifier lens there, so you can read the date a little bit more easily, and of course, this is an automatic movement. Another feature this has, which is interesting, is Ball's amortizer. Now, what is the amortizer? This is kind of a, a bit of an obscure feature, but it's interesting. I don't know exactly when to use it, but again, it's kind of cool. It's there. You flip the watch over, and you see how there's this propeller case back? Well, this actually moves. I can move that to a locked position. Now, what does that do? Well, that actually lowers the case back into the case a little bit, and it locks the automatic rotor from moving. Why would you want to lock it? Well, apparently in certain high shock environments, that rotor, if it moves, can break or cause damage to the movement. So if you think you're gonna be in a super high shock environment, you're gonna to wanna to take off your watch, spin that amortizer around, lock the automatic rotor, and prevent the watch from automatically winding. Of course, you can still manually wind it, and then you'll have to take it off afterwards, and then very easily. It's actually, the action is nice. It's, it's, it's smooth, but firm in the sense that it's not going to like, you know, move on its own accidentally. And then you're going to want to unlock it. And then you can actually feel the rotor moving around again, which is cool. So the amortizer is available on some ball watches. This isn't the first, this is, the, this is just happens to be the first that I've tested that has it. It's a cool feature. Um, I don't know how often you're going to want to use it, but you know, if you really want to seriously get into that weekend warrior mode, you're going to want to turn on that amortizer once in a while, right? 
So let's get this watch on the wrist. Oh, before that, I forgot another, another cool feature. This watch is just, you know, chock full of cool features. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, in addition to being water resistant, I believe to 300 meters, um, 100 meters, only 100 meters. What a letdown. No, there's a lot of there's a lot of actual ball dive watches. Um, but this watch is 100 meters water resistant, but it's also highly anti-magnetic in addition to having that that shock proofness there. Um, there it is. Amortizer. It's like an accountant. So if you look here on the, the bracelet and, and the deployment, great bracelet, by the way, really attractive, good quality bracelets. Cool. Like it says ball design there. It, it's almost engineered to a point but it's just it's it's a really high quality thing but each end of the bracelet has its own micro adjust so you can pull it out a little bit um, to have a little bit on each end which i think is a really great little feature so that's kind of like your diver's extension or it's a little micro adjust if you just want to let it out a little bit let's put it on the wrist finally fits very securely it just happens to be sized this way on my wrist where it's not too tight but definitely not too loose. So I can wear it like this. The watch isn't flying around. And when you have a larger, heavier watch, you really want to make sure that it can fit snugly on your wrist. You want to make sure you can get that fit. If you don't, then you're going to have a very unpleasant wearing experience. The watch is going to move around. It's going to hit your, your hand a lot. But if you see here where it's worn just under the, that sort of wrist bone right there, and it's not going to sort of interfere with me moving my wrist, this is the perfect place to wear a watch. And when you have a larger watch, if you can get it to fit securely right here, here on the bracelet or strap, you're going to have a really enjoyable experience. You're not even going to notice that's a big watch. And you can see just looking straight on it, it doesn't even look that big. Again, it's a little bit of a, of a, of a thick watch, but, but definitely by no means, you know, crazy or insane. I like to make fun of Ball's naming schemes when they name their watches. Um, because it's kind of like they have one of those computers that has a bunch of random terms and they mix them together. I mean, I'll say it again. It's the Ball Engineer hydrocarbon space master orbital to chronograph i mean that's a lot and i i love i love me some ball i think these are great time pieces everyone knows that but i'm not going to stop you know um pulling their chain a little bit when it comes to the naming i just here's the problem it's not that the name sounds silly the problem is that as a consumer, I don't think that you're going to really be able to remember the name. So when someone tells you the name of a watch, since so many ball watches sound a little similar or just mix up words here and there, it's so difficult for you as a consumer to like go online or go into a store and ask for it or search for it because you don't remember what it is. Then you're sort of sitting there guessing, uh, ball, chronograph, GMT, and then you're not really sure what the exact model is. So I think that if they had slightly more distinctive names, you would have a much better opportunity to remember them and thus be able to find them later or just have sort of a better emotional um, attachment. The last thing I want to talk about is the loom on the dial. In the review, you will see the loom shot, which is probably one of the coolest loom shots I have ever seen. And the reason for that is Ball mixes here a couple of elements. You have traditional luminant mixed with the tritium gas tube. So for the bezel, for example, you have super luminova and the dial is a mixture of having the, the, uh, the tritium gas tubes, which self illuminate as well as some loom. So it's a really, really impressive look, especially since there's different colors. So, um, I look forward to sharing with you the, the written review on a blog to watch where you can see that loom shot and be as impressed as I am. So again, this is the ball engineer hydrocarbon space master orbital two chronograph watch retail price is $5,300, which I think isn't bad. And you can see the full review on a blog to watch soon. Thanks.